Hello and welcome to my new video. Today I want to show you an opening trap for white against the Dutch defense. The game that I want to show you is a game between Martin Marley and Günther Schmidt and took place in 1989. But to be totally honest, I could have shown you plenty of other games because the trap is quite common and over the years many black players fall for the trap. Even I have to admit that in my youth days where I used to play the Dutch defense quite frequently, I once fall for the trap. So you can see the critical position already on the board. It's right to move and win right on the spot, but take your time. Before we just jump right into the tactic, I of course want to show you how we reach the position and what Black could have done to avoid the trap. So without further ado, it's time to checkmate. <laughs> So after the moves d4 and f5, we reach the starting position of the Dutch defense. And here White already played a nice tricky move, h3. His plan is to push his pawn to g4 and attack Black's kingside right away, because he argues that a move like f5 somehow weakened Black's king and especially the light squares around, his black, uh, around Black's king. So Black played a normal move. Knight of 6, nothing wrong with this move, and white stick to his plan and plays g4. Here, black can win a pawn by grabbing the pawn on g4, and after h takes g4 and knight takes g4, black has, white has two good options. He could play the simple e4 and grabbing the center, attacking the knight, and all his pieces will fly into the game and he will start an attack. Or and this is my recommendation, queen e3. This is a pretty tricky move because white already threatens to take back the pawn on h7 and now black has to guard it. So a logical move and a move that occurred many times in practical game is knight f6. And believe it or not, but this is already a blunder and white can move uh, and white can win right on the spot. So I will advise you to pause the video and think about this position and what's White's best move that wins immediately. I'll give you two, three seconds to pause the video. One, two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. If not, not a problem. I will give you a second chance by giving you a hint. Black's light squares are kinda weak. How can we weaken Black's white squares even more? So with the thin, I give you three seconds again to pause the video if you need to, and then I will show you the solution. One, two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. The right move is rook takes h7, x clan. What a beautiful move to win to end in game, right? And what can Black do in this position? The answer is nothing. If he takes the rook with his rook, then it's queen g6 mate. If he takes the rook with this knight, then it's again queen to g6 mate. If he steps aside with the rook, I bet you guess what it is, right? Queen g6 mate. And what else can black play? Well, I guess the best move is just playing b5 to make room for his king to run, but then we simply just grab a rook and grab a rook and Moves like queen g6 will follow to destroy Black's right to castle and yeah, Black just simply can resign and this is the trap. Many players fought for, even I once fought for it. So you may ask, okay, but what could have Black done better? So I just want to get back step by step and show you all the alternative moves for Black. Let's say in this position, if Black starts thinking and he sees the, uh, that rook takes h7 as a threat if he goes back with a knight then he may think okay let's play g6 and here you have two good options 
Option number one is a safe option. You just simply develop your knight to c3, and then you will start developing your pieces like bishop to g5, pawn to e4, castle and queen side, and probably your pawn or your knight to f3, and your bishop could be good on h3, or if you just bring over your queen, then it could also be good on c4. So you have quite some options, and I think it's a good position, even if you're down a pawn, you are quite active and you will attack Black's King right away. But I think you also have another nice uh, option, and this is again a rook sacrifice on h7. Because Black has to take the rook, and then you have to check, and now it's not a mate because he can move his rook to f7. Quite unusual spot for a rook so early in the game, right? And well, you will win back a knight, and after d5 and queen to a uh, h5, we reach an um, unbalanced position where we have a knight and a pawn for a rook. But black has some difficulties to face. At first, our queen pins the rook, so the king cannot move and the rook cannot move either. That allows us to go uh, to threaten a move like knight f3 and knight e5 or knight g5. So I think even if we're down a little bit in material, white is preferable. And yeah, if I would be white and my opponent would play g6, I wouldn't mind to play this variation, but if that's too risky for you, you just can stick with the knight c3 variation. So you may say, well, dude, I'm a black player and this doesn't look satisfying both for me. So can I play something else to avoid the trap and get a better position? And yeah, of course you can. Um, in this position, after g4, it's probably best for black to play d5 and go straight into the uh, into stone wall defense. Let's say white continues attacking black center with c4, then you could guard it with e6, and after moves like knight f3, c6, knight c3, we reach a typical, well, probably typical, but we reach a, a position that can occur in the stone wall defense, and yeah, I would say it's kind of equal, so, I would play it with white, of course, and if I would have been a Stonewall defense player, I probably would play it with black as well, but I am not good at Stonewall, so this would not be for me. I would play a different variation, and this is right at the second move. Uh, instead of the knight of six move, I would have played b6. And the reason behind this move is that let's say white sticks to his plan and plays g4. Then I have the nice and attacking move e5. And white's best option is probably to take the pawn on e5. And here I would advise you to sacrifice another pawn. I cannot say that taking the pawn and exchanging the queen looks like a good idea. So what I would prefer do as black in this position, I will play knight c6, attacking the e4 pawn, uh, e5 pawn, and white has to take on d6, and after bishop takes d6, I already developed two pieces, yes, I'm down a pawn, but um, white has to be pretty, pretty careful. For example, g takes f5 is already a blunder if you ask me, because then I can develop another piece, and now I have three pieces already developed, and look at Look at white's pieces, they're all at the starting position, and even if you're down a pawn, it can only be black who's better in this position. So, white really shouldn't take this pawn, instead, he should play a move like knight c3. And then I will just gain my pawn back as black by taking on g5, uh, g4, and after h takes g4, bishop takes g4, I would simply advise white to develop his bishop to g2 because he really should try to destroy black's queen side otherwise um, black will play as 
black will play queen e7 and castle and queenside. So with bishop g2, we are threatening to take on uh, c6 and destroying black's pawn structure, even if it means that we are giving up the bishop pair. Uh, anyway, black still plays queen e7. And when white doesn't play this move, then we will simply castle queenside. And this looks like quite good option for black to gain an attack, right? So um, white's best move probably to take on c6 and after we took back. Well, I will stop at this point and just think about the position. Both sides find it hard to castle. As black, you really don't want to castle shortly because the rook on h1 is already looking quite dangerous on h7. But to be honest, you probably will castle king side anyway. Um, you definitely don't want to castle queen side because after moves like queen d3, there's already threats of queen a6, and yeah, your pawn structure looks just horrible, so your king isn't safe on the king side uh, on the queen side. But it's not easy for white to castle as well because let's say, I mean, he never will castle king side, right? It's just too dangerous for him with the g file and the h file semi open. Um, king won't be safe uh, at the king side, so he has to try to castle queen side, probably by placing his bishop on e3. What's not too bad because there's no white bishop on f1 anymore, so the bishop on f1 wouldn't be blocked because there is no one. And then bringing his queen to d3 and castling queen side, but. That's not so easy for white as well because we got the semi open b file and can attack white's king on the queen side as well. So, all in all, I would say that this position is quite equal with chances for both sides to attack and win the game. So, I hope you liked today's video. If you did, please let me know in the comments, hit the like and the subscribe button, and see you next time when it's again time to checkmate.